Hi, this is Courtney Taylor Taylor from the Dandy Warhols, and you are listening to the Nothing's Shocking Podcast. Want to know what's going on in the world of music? Then tune in to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, a non genre based, all ages friendly rock and roll program. Join us weekly for interviews with all your favorite rock stars from the mainstream to the underground. You can find us at nothingshocking.libsyn.com or anywhere you download podcasts. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These guys are 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil. It's fun, don't you agree? Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unteed, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Liz. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Lipson or any pod catchers. Like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in downtown Rock Island and downtown Davenport, Iowa. We would like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for allowing us to use their music for our intro and bumper ending. Tonight's guest is... Courtney Taylor Taylor of the Dandy Warhols. Yes, fantastic interview. Yeah. And uh, he is living in Oregon. And at the time, there was the Oregon fires, but it wasn't close to his home right. quite at that time. So um, I think but, he was working on a new, like an Australian tour coming up yeah, this fall. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, before we get to this interview, we want to touch up upon a couple things. We also want to give some condolences to Charlie Watts's family yeah. and also... Uh, Don Everly, the yeah, Everly Brothers. The Everly Brothers and, and their family as well. Um, we want to touch upon uh, Jeff and I and my brother-in-law, Chris, uh, went to the Radke yeah. show at Low Pies Pizza in Davenport, Second Iowa. Second year anniversary. Second year anniversary. It was a free show. They've been opening up for the Foo Fighters. What a show. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you haven't seen them, then you missed out on if you're here local. But if you haven't seen them and they're coming to your area, go check them out. Yeah. And because... Uh, probably not going to see them as cheap anymore or free any longer right. because they're going to be big yeah and I, I don't remember how many albums they have i think three i was, ch- I was checking them out uh, before the show and man great stuff even even the albums are great oh fantastic so hey let's not waste any more time let's get to this interview all right good night, good night. Courtney, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Jeff Unteed. Courtney, it's going to be fun to talk to you tonight. Uh, I hope so. I hope <laughs> I'm clever and pithy and everything good. Oh, fantastic. Um, well, you know, like every other musician, COVID-19 has affected uh, you professionally. How have you made it through the pandemic on a creative level? Well, uh I decided to write a 30-second long song 
every week <laughs> and uh, make a video for it and post it every Friday, and it's called Fast Friday. Did that for a couple months, and then my band started coming in and hanging out and doing them too. And uh, we've got we're almost up to a year now. Hmm. So that was a big deal. Um, we posted, we made a, a four hour, we had made dinner music for a four hour, nine course meal <laughs> dinner party with <laughs> visuals. So it has, it has each piece of music is paired with like, uh, you know, like a salad course is very, <laughs> right. Very icy and crispy and cold sounds and, you know, kind of cool, like bright thing, and then the and then the soup course is like, <laughs> and it's just as ambient. Uh, years ago, I, I realized that um, if you go to a nice restaurant, you don't get really interesting music. You get chillax lounge, yeah. and uh, it's real tired. And if you're a musician and a studio guy, it's you don't want to, you know, spend a few hundred bucks on dinner and have to listen to that. So I thought, you know, <laughs> this record that we had made years ago, and I don't even know if we finished it, but uh, we were trying to just make a, a noisy record, hmm. a freeform record using every single instrument we had ever collected as a band, which is a great number of instruments. So uh, it's an eccentric, uh, you know, lengthy work. Um, and I, I thought, you know, you know what this would be good for. And so I started to arrange it to go with the texture of, of the foods in my, my dream nine course meal. So then when COVID happened, we had never released it because it's just mm -hmm. one of those ginormous projects you never get around to, yeah. or we don't, we're a fairly flaky band, you know, <laughs> we, so I, I started getting recipes to go with every one of them and then do wine pairings with the recipes then come up with film that uh, that matches it. So like the icy thing, um, it's uh, 80s uh, skiing films of skiers in the 80s, mm -hmm. and then like the 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 deep warm watery one is uh, stock footage of submarines in the in tropical seas underwater hmm. and you know it's and, and on and on and on so it's that that was one big our first big covid project and then the the weekly friday thing happened after that started after that along with um every wednesday we, we uh, post a new uh mix of an old live track from some show that we have dug up and our archives, or our, actually our, our live sound guy digs them up, and then we mix them. Oh, cool. So you know, we we really became kind of the studio heads we always wanted to be. Is what we what we and I did. I I particularly I was I was down there five days a week. Um, it's two hour walk from my house, so it was it was very good for me, mm -hmm. you know, to just walk down there two miles a day. Thanks, man. Got, just got handed a little glass of uh, probably an Oregon rosé. <laughs> yep. Very good, awesome. excellent. All right, Jeff, you got Ooh. the next one. Well, yeah, I was uh, the the tracks you were just talking about. Is that the uh, the ta ta I'm going to butcher this. Taffle music uh, means more when you're when you're alone. Taffle music, yeah. Music, yes. Taffle music is a is a thing that happened, I think, kind of between the Renaissance and the Baroque periods. And it was uh, it was just you know the, the grand dukes and kings and queens and princes they would get their favorite uh, composer and just pay them to live at their place for however long it took and just make music for dinner parties yeah. perfect music for dinner parties now ultimately sort of as baroque. Uh, got later towards more of the classical era um Tafel music got blown off because it was considered you know lightweight because it was for just for um having dinner parties mm -hmm. with but they're like the greatest Tafel music record i think is uh, 
Johann Heinrich Schmelzer, the in, indigestively named Schmelzer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's not a delicious sound, but the guy made the, the greatest music for dinner parties until, until us. Oh, there you go. Was, yeah. Yeah. So, and it, it took us 400 years, but I think we have, we have outlasted, uh, J H Schmelzer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change gears on you yeah. here. Uh, this, com- right. this coming right. December, the Dandy Warhols are touring Australia with the Hoodoo Gurus. Can you talk more about this upcoming tour down under? Yeah, I mean, it, it's we'll we'll know in a month if it's going to happen then or if it's going to get moved. Mm-hmm. You know, they have a, a North Korean approach to this uh, pandemic, and uh, there, which means that you know, if three people get it, they're they're in hard lockdown, and they have been the whole time, mm-hmm. uh, in and out of, of of extreme lockdown. So we're not we're not really sure. Uh, there's at this point, and there, yeah, it, it's really, it's really weird. There, there was a, a video going around where one of their main doctor, government doctor spokespeople was, you know, something that sounded so blatantly BS <laughs> that uh, I think they might start freaking out. Like this is. Uh, you know, the the greatest uh, upward redistribution of wealth in the history of humankind, right? Mm-hmm. This is it. Yeah. Yes. It is never it, the depression for America was was all was the other biggest one we've ever experienced in in our country, but this is the entire world and it's happening. So uh, it 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 does beg conspiracy, uh, at least a look, you know, a good look, and maybe one day we'll find out how how much of this was true and how much of it was you know uh, opportunists exactly yeah exactly you know. well i did want to kind of touch upon the hoodoo gurus with you you know obviously yeah. they're they're veterans rockers of australia for the last 40 years um how and did... great and really great like really consistently awesome guitar Yes. Badass, cool, yeah. heroics. They're so good. I remember watching them on 120 Minutes back in the 80s on MTV. But um, how did you uh, build a relationship with the band? Has it been like an ongoing relationship that you've had with members of the group? No, Hoops? that's, 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 we've never met them. I mean, oh. we've, we're friends with everyone else the church, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, the meanies. I mean, you just, you name it. Like, we've been friends with Tame and Paula and, you know, Courtney Barnett and Mm -hmm. somehow we have never met the hoodoo gurus and they are the most like us out of all of them. It's, it's, it's really surprising. And I, I, I was of course a big fan of the song. I want you back. Yes. When I was a kid and then their, their pipeline to America sort of dried up and and then I guess they just don't play very much, and they're not out and about. Um, only only the singer is a is a drinker, <laughs> and uh, he's also a wine collector. I'm a wine collector, and uh, so you don't see the guys out when mm. you go out. You don't see them. You don't go, hey mate, you know. Mm. And um, so that's kind of probably why. But when we got offered the gig, I went ahead and dug into the YouTube hole when we got into the YouTubes of their band. And it was just, I mean, I just fell in love with them. Mm. I, I couldn't believe it. And they were so cool. You know, I like, I, you know, the, the thing to do is to look at a band when they were brand new. What was their first single? Did they have a first video for it? And what was that? And they, their, their legacy is just more or less perfect. Mm. They're, they're, they, they, they just stuck to it. They just stuck to psychedelic, you know, so from psych rock to folk rock to garage rock. It, it, they just stuck in their wheelhouse and cranked out really great records. And they have such a cool singer. And, uh, yeah, I, they, I, I really, I just was charmed in, in a deeper way than I think I've been charmed by a band in a long time. Well, I was excited for the prospect of you guys to do this, yeah. and I hope it happens for you because this is a, an exciting uh, opportunity. 
Yeah. Yeah, totally. Good, Jeff. All right. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about, uh, I just, um, discovered uh, Taylor and DeBoer. Um, and the yep. Dutch Masters sang beautifully EP. It's got uh, the two of you uh, kind of like in a, a li- it sounds like a live setting with acoustic guitars and and the harmony of uh, low and high harmonies doing uh, some cover songs. Can you talk a little bit about the making of that EP? Yeah. Um, Brent, Fathead, and I, uh, he, <laughs> we used to live in the same apartment building. And out of 15 apartments, we had 14 of them were he and I and our friends. So then we bought the bar next door, which is a homeless bar. Mm. And there'd be like one or two homeless dudes in there doing the dollar PBR and eating the free popcorn machine popcorn. (laughs) And, uh, you know, duct tape on the tears in the carpet and, you know, the whole bit. Uh, But, you know, it was a dark bar. It was a very dark place with dark lacquered wood and it had that, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. And then that was the last time somebody did anything to clean it up or put a new lamp in there or whatever. So it was <laughs> very gorgeous in a in a in a seedy, awesome way. And it just led to super, super party time. Uh, all these cats living in a same apartment building together and then owning the bar next door and making sure drinks were real cheap. And we were, you know, we were on MTV almost every day back at that time. So it really became this insane scene. And Brent and I, we were on tour so much that we would lay, uh, and the band wasn't, we weren't making enough money to have everyone couldn't have their own hotel room. So you had to room with somebody. So obviously my cousin and I were best friends. We were going to room together. And we also partied together and did everything together. So we would get back to the hotel in London or Hanover or Sydney or St. Louis. And, you know, we'd be buzzing, we'd be high, we'd be hammered and just trying to come down. (laughs) And we would just lay on our beds. You know, you get the motel room or two queen size beds. And we would lay there each with an acoustic guitar and just play songs we knew really slow and quietly (laughs) sing ourselves to sleep and uh then we thought we better have this this is this would be the best come down record uh because it's tried and true It, it, it evolved from trying to come down and so uh we sat in fathead's apartment on and off and just would record whatever we had come up with when we'd get home from tours. So it probably took a couple years and it was probably 1999 to maybe 2001 or maybe it was 2000 to 2002, somewhere in there in that, in that dark old apartment of fat heads upstairs from mine. And um, yeah. And, and then, and then it, it, it we did that and never released it again we're flaky we like to do the thing but the interfacing with like market and the world and that that we're not really that we're not those people we we like to make art you know like petulant children on the on the on the potty every morning <laughs> creating art and then flushing it away um so yeah, and then we noticed that that became, a few years later, it just became a huge trend um, with that one dude doing the piano with the all around me are familiar faces, olden places. He did a really slow mm-hmm. and, and melancholic version of that, that really, uh, the, the only truly great Tears for Fears song, which is... Uh, Oh, whatever that Mad thing World. is called. Mad World. Mad, Mad World. Yeah, that that is that is just like one of the greatest songs in history. You know, it just it was a mind blower for me as a child. Like this new wave thing, man. I I loved it. I bought it, hook, line, and sinker, and uh, and that song really stood out. Like uh, Riding on the Metro by Berlin, mm-hmm. that really stood out. It's very pure style. And emotion as well, you know, swathed in this really like sonic beauty and, and 
and um, you know, sufficiently avant garde, adequately <laughs> avant garde. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really open my heart to a lot of music because sonically it is not sufficiently avant garde. Mm. It's just I don't believe that they're cool enough for me to want to want to buy into their emotions and take them on as my own and feel like they have something to offer me and da, 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 on my own self analysis and my own journey of growth or whatever. I don't I don't care. Style is the gateway to feeling and and um, believability, I guess. So uh, anyway, people started to do that thing, you know, where you take a song, you slow it way down and you yeah. sing it really the thing that we had done. Um, because of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, people were doing it and becoming very successful at it. So we kind of didn't care anymore. It wasn't unique, <laughs> so we never we never released it. You know, it's um, so here we are, twenty years later. Exactly. <laughs> Finally, like, well, I'm just you know, also the Dandy Warhols have a really you know we have we have kind of real big boy management now. Yeah. You know, for the first time in our career, we've never really had you know what you consider like a legit strong management organized on top of things finish what they say chase you down <laughs> and make you finish what you say <laughs> right yeah. so that's the difference so they chased us down and said hey what's this record you you brought up uh you brought it up you know last month like what i don't know <laughs> uh you said you and brand you and fatty did this record and uh, it has a lot of songs on it. It's got Bruce Springsteen and Cindy Lauper on it, and you know, oh, oh, right, right, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we could do that. And then you know, a good manager will just hassle, you know, it's herding cats trying to get, you know, these kids in a band. They're just so flaky. Oh my God, you can't trust them to do anything. Follow through, on it. so they make us follow through on stuff. And then, so we've put out a lot of, we've put out quite a lot in the last, you know. 18 months. Oh, yeah. fantastic. I enjoyed it. Um, the Dandy Warhols have an upcoming performance August 27th at the Pioneer Town Film Festival. And September... Pioneer Town International oh, Film Festival. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's okay. I, it's I stand corrected. It <laughs> and uh, yeah. September 11th, you're also performing at the lot in Portland. Uh, can you talk yep. a little bit more about these uh, these performances that are upcoming? Um, and also, you know, which we're still dealing with this idiotic Delta variant, trying to play live shows during all this stuff. <laughs> the lot, well, they're both outdoors. Oh. Uh, well, no, I think Pioneer Town might be in like an open-ended giant barn or warehouse gotcha. in the desert. You know, it's Joshua Tree, so it's it's de it's desert, scrub desert. You know, um, the lot is on the waterfront in Portland, and we played two shows there. Uh, maybe a month and a bit ago and they only allow 300 people to see it even though it's outdoors and the, you're in these little pods that have the plastic white picket fence around them and you can get either two four or six adirondack chairs in your pod oh okay and so they're all separated they all have a piece of astro turf and then white adirondack chairs and white picket fence around them <laughs> and they're in they're just in this grid basically this slightly uh varying grid whether it's two four or six you know and so you're looking down at this thing and and the sun is setting behind the city up in the distance what we're facing and then if you're facing us this 120 year old bridge span on ramp is just arcing off behind us like ultimate steampunk so it's it's a it's one of the coolest settings i mean for us it was amazing because to look at that uh it looked like a deleted scene from edward scissorhands <laughs> it's super super pop art and and there's a cynicism to it to the division between the pods and it it, it it boy i couldn't stop looking i loved it i didn't want to ever get off the stage it was just so stinking cool uh so that, that's what so that's so we're doing another one of those and i think they're gonna allow maybe 500 people or something at mm. that, on that one and then i don't know what the pioneer tanning is going to be i'm hoping it's a lot of internet young makers that make uh you know, spaghetti westerns, modern spaghetti westerns. I know Mike Bruce, 
who was our filmmaker during the Earth to the Dandy Warhol era, uh, he is kind of one of the premier sort of spaghetti western indie directors of, of Earth, really. And he would know all the other ones, you know, from Italy and Spain and Australia. And, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a genre that still is, is made. Absolutely. Jeff, you got the next one? Well, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about your, uh, in 2019, your la- the, the last studio album from the Dandy Warhols, uh, Why You Were, Why You So Crazy. Um, yep. So that was starting to get some momentum, and I think you were touring for that one prior to the uh, pandemic. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how your writing style has evolved through the years to make that album? The, a couple of the songs that um, were really catchy for me were Small Town Girls and Motor City Steel. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that we, I don't really know that we've evolved, you know, we don't, we don't feel any more mature or, uh, at that point we hadn't, um, you know, the record, the sounds just change, but I don't know that they, you know, I don't know that we get any better or worse really. Um, you know, I'm just glad that we don't get worse. You know, I, <laughs> Why You So Crazy is my favorite record we've ever made. I feel like it's our greatest work, but not because we got better. It just sort of accidentally was better. Right. You know? So I, I don't know. But, you know, we're, we're studio heads and we're, we're drug takers, you know. So, <laughs> um, you know, we're probably not ever going to change that much as a band. You know, it's, it's going to be trippy and it's we... Yeah. You know, we like, you know, we're kids, we're new wave kids. We were all new wave kids. So, you know, there's going to be that, those elements of, of experimental pop music. And then we also, you know, we also are stoners. So there's, you know, there's going to be the sixties. The sixties will always be in our music some, somewhere in there. Um, and we love guitars. We love old synthesizers. You know, so I, I don't know. Yeah, we just we just kind of circle around the corral without ever escaping it. I, I feel like, and it's a huge corral with a lot of different trippy places to go hang out in. But um, you know, I, I don't I don't think uh, I don't know. I, I don't think radical change or growth is a is you know an issue for us. We, we we just we we don't fight it <laughs> whatever it is we, you know we don't fight it we just we just go, yeah we get big ideas and then we do them in a very half ass way and that's good enough <laughs> we're we're stoked we get we get our emotional psychological sexual shit out into a record and it sounds awesome and it and it feels real and it's you know it's deep and it's passionate and it affirms courage under pressure and it's fucking great music you know yeah. that's that's yeah. really it i don't really let's, we're more more hippie let's yeah. take this a different direction as far as um you know getting in as as the band's process to getting in the studio the old-fashioned way recording music collaborating that way or do you we, t- uh, we've always we've always owned our own studio oh so is we it have, you, we've never gone into a studio to record oh we've okay. always we would rent in the old days we would rent like a floor of a warehouse or something um, when Portland was very empty and you can get one for a thousand bucks a month. And then we would get in there with the sawzalls and the two by fours and the sheetrock. <laughs> and we would, you know, build out at whatever we needed to a little bit here or there to get the sounds the way we like them. I mean, recording is a 50% of it is uh, sonic environments. Mm-hmm. What shape is a room? What textures are the walls, the ceiling, the floor, you know, uh, are we carpeting the walls and egg cartoning the ceiling, carpeting the floor? Are we leaving the floor concrete and padding all the walls? You know, but it's all, you know, tile, shower, record in the shower. You know, mm-hmm. it's tile. It's spanky and bright and harsh and really, you know, like makes your teeth ache. And that's a <laughs> that's a sexy sound in the right setting, you know? Absolutely. Um, I guess I have two more questions for you, but um, this one is kind of directed as far as future goes after we get through this pandemic. Um, 
for new music for the dandies um what what is the uh, expectations a, a full length album a, an ep are you guys going to release singles at a time how's it going to work for you guys uh we'll probably continue doing the traditional albums you know um mm -hmm. we were going to get a, a new single out in november uh for the Australian tour with the gurus, but uh, if that gets moved, then we'll just wait and do it, you know, then. We might have the whole record done then. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's, we like albums, you know, we're, again, we're not, we're not big on change um, in, in that, in the business end of things, you know, and the, the world is, is, resembles not at all what it was when we started but we're going to ignore that oh very good I, I have one last question for you um so uh the oregon fires uh what's the status with that i know right now where we live we're in, in illinois on the mississippi river and we're getting smoke on our skyline we can't even see blue skies coming from the west coast so what's going on over there with the oregon fires right now uh i don't see any smoke and i've heard that we've got them coming you know they're on their way and they're just far enough out of portland now to where we're not feeling it but you know it's it's not even august yet so it should be pretty horrible well God. um so, we're out of our little. yeah we're out of our allotted time um but before we let you go for the evening is there anything that we left off that you would like to plug or promote uh, so no, I don't, I don't. So this is how it's going to work. We have about oh three or four episodes we have to release before yours. So we look at right around about three and a half weeks before yours is released, and then I will get it to your PR people immediately after Jeff, the editing wizard, gets it all ready to go. So yes, Jeff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, it was fun. Sound good? Okay. Thanks, you guys. Hey, thank all you right. so much. Take thank care. You. Awesome. Have an easy one, man. Bye bye.